Good morning, happy Tuesday. Praise God. Another opportunity to believe that he is. To know that he loves you. And to walk with him in victory on this earth. Knowing that no one and nothing can destroy you because you belong to him. Hallelujah, praise God. We are his children. And he loves us with an everlasting love. Completely dedicated to our salvation, our restoration, and our transformation into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. So that when we see him, we will know him and be like him. Praise God. I'm so looking forward to seeing Jesus and being like him. And each day is an opportunity to grow in the wisdom and knowledge of who God is and what he has in store for our lives. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning joy-filled and confident that the love that you have for us is more than enough to sustain our walk in faith upon this earth for your glory. Thank you, Father. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives in us. We thank you for providing for all our needs and making a way where there is no way. You are the wonder-working God, the creator of all that exists, and we exalt your name praise you for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we continue our study this week titled Spiritual Practices for Christian Leaders. The daily devotional this morning is titled Seek Wisdom and Understanding from my favorite book of the Bible, Proverbs chapter 8. Verses 1 through 11. It says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gate, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be, you, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wicked, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Amen. Hallelujah. Wisdom. We should always pray for and seek wisdom because God grants wisdom as you study his word meditate on it and ask him for it he will bring wisdom and understanding into your mind so that you might walk in truth walking in truth requires wisdom 
God has it in abundance, ready to give to those who seek it. And so we praise God for bringing wisdom and understanding into our minds so that we might be transformed by the renewing of this mind that he's given us. Praise God. All right, section two, commit to study and doctoring. Keep moving forward. First Timothy chapter four, verses 15 and 16. And it says, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Okay, the greatest defense against worldliness is a good offense. Godliness does not come about simply because of the things we stop doing or the places we stop visiting. As important as some of those things may be, rather, godliness is the fruit of a life disciplined through prayer, faithful service, and the study of God's Word. As believers, we are to be an example to others by the words we speak, the company we keep, the way we love, and the way we live. Paul called Timothy to meditate on God's word. This is not to be confused with the mind emptying meditation of some pagan religions. Rather, it is the mind filled practice of studying the scriptures and the truth to be discerned from them. This is the safest, surest path toward biblical holiness. Compare this verse to Paul's admission in Philippians 4 8. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Pagan meditation practices brings participants to a standstill while they are secluded in a state of mindlessness. While all believers need regular quiet times, Christian meditation does not cause us to withdraw from the world, but rather equips us to go back into the world possessing a godly heart and mind. Meditating on good and godly things must not be a sporadic hit and miss activity. It must be a priority and for good reason. Take pains with these things, be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. And that's from 1 Timothy 4.15. While worldly meditation is self-centered or self-conscious, godly meditation has a twofold purpose, both self and others. Certainly, we must be self-aware, recognizing our own needs. Christian psychologists and counselors suggest the reason many high-profile pastors and leaders fall into burnout and or sin is because in their zeal to provide pastoral care for others, they neglect their own spiritual disciplines. Jesus asks, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world or lose your own soul? <coughs> That's in Mark 
chapter 8, verse 36. For this reason, Paul exhorted Timothy to take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. We must practice what we preach to save ourselves and others from falling prey to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There's an insert here titled, Water Down Gospel. It says, in business, there's nothing wrong with watering down a strong flavor. But the same impulse leads to disaster in our faith. Like the inauthentic Americanized style of Mexican food, there is a gospel that is simply not the real thing. The hot, offensive themes, such as the cross and the blood of Christ, are taken out, and a comfortable, people-pleasing substitute is found. The false gospel may be soothing to the taste, but it is powerless to save. The genuine gospel will always be an offense to sinful humankind. And that's from a book called Choice Contemporary Stories. All right, section 2B, continue in God's word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. It says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Ooh, I love those two verses, those three verses. Okay, biblical meditation goes beyond contemplation of oneself or one's inner thoughts and personal needs. It focuses on our mental affirmation of and identification with godly church tradition and the inspired scriptures. Paul had earlier drawn upon Timothy's spiritual heritage for I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelled in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. And that's from 2 Timothy 1, 5. Now he urges him to continue in those things he has learned in the context of his warnings about false teachers who have crept in among them. Paul challenges the young pastor not to be swayed by every new doctrine or prophetic utterance, but to continue in the truths taught to him by godly influ influencers in his life and from the Holy Scriptures. Verse 16 of the text dictates the authority of the word by stating the source of inspiration to be God. The mechanics of this inspiration, or literally, God breathed, act, are not explained. However, we should be careful not to get hung up on understanding and explaining how it happened to the extent that we miss the emphasis of the verse. All scripture is God's truth communicated to us in written form. The authority of scripture establishes 
the necessity for the Word of God being a priority in our lives. Verse 16 states the scriptures are profitable. God's Word is not just a complication of religious writings. It is alive, powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword. That's from Hebrews 4.12. The scriptures are our primary source for doctrine or teaching. Any doctrine not in harmony with the word of God should be discarded. The rule of scripture in the act of reproof or conviction cannot be overemphasized. When discipline is necessary, correction is made through the guidance of the word. In fact, the total process of instruction and in righteousness, which brings us to a mature understanding of God's standard of life, is based on the word of God. Amen. Continue in God's word. Remember the things that you're taught. Dwell on those things. Seek to gain wisdom from the Word of God. That is the opportunity that Paul is explaining to Timothy. That you have an opportunity to continue and what you've been taught and what you've learned so that you stay on the true path, the path of the knowledge of God and his truths. I thank you for your time this morning. I pray this lesson has encouraged you to draw close to God, to seek his face, to commune with him, to be connected to him through his Holy Spirit that lives in you so that you might walk in truth and in light, being a vessel for the work that he is doing on this earth, which is the word, the work of salvation, salvation of the lost. That's God's mission, to save sinners to cause us to repent and to turn toward him, our maker, the lover of our souls. So walk worthily before him. Draw nigh to him, and he will draw nigh to you. And enjoy the fellowship that we have with our creator, God. Have a wonderful, a wonderful and blessed Tuesday. See you later.